Belgians are the new world champions. Good night with the Belgian art. Baltimore is the world champion. The Liner and the Orioles are the world champions. This is an incredible baseball town. We can feel that. We feel the history. Cal Ripken Jr. has reached the unreachable star. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, I'm from Northern Virginia. Definitely came to the Camden Yards right in the heyday and uh, remember how uh, full and electric the place was. This is one of baseball's storied franchises, but 47 wins last year. It was an awful season on just about every account. Michael Eyes, the new VP and general manager. How does he go about overseeing the rebuilding process in Baltimore? This is a team that needed some refurbishment in baseball operations and the way that it went about business, kind of bringing in an analytics department from scratch. We had no real international scouting operation. Um, the deck was kind of clear in terms of the major league coaching staff. So it was almost like an expansion franchise. Mike really put a ton of work into building the organization from the bottom up. I knew what he was building and I knew how well he drafted and so I thought it was a great opportunity. I'm very pleased to announce Brandon Hyde as our 20th manager in franchise history. Just talking baseball with him it was pretty clear that we saw the game similarly which is important because you're gonna be talking to this person two or three times a day but I think most importantly his resume basically everything you can do in player development. He was a coach in the minors, he was a manager in the minors, he was a farm director, then he moved to the major league coaching staff and ultimately bench coach for Joe Madden. He was totally covered, so he'd been through a big rebuild, he knew what he was getting into, and I don't think anything surprises him when you've got that kind of level of preparation in your career. Baltimore really cleaned house, really dumped everything out, and starting new here, I think it's gonna be fun to really see how this all pans out in the next couple of years. Well, they're in the rebuilding process after 115 losses and 108 losses. And the ball game is over. Orioles have now dropped 19 games in a row. Well, <laughs> we're, you know, in, in this division especially, there was, uh, there was uh, a lot of challenges. From a talent standpoint, we weren't ready to compete. We weren't able to pitch to some of the lineups in the American League East. That wasn't easy, honestly. Uh, Mike was had way more patience than I did some, on some nights during those years. Well, it's definitely tough at the major league level uh, to incur those kind of losses, even when you know your farm system is building up and uh, looking great for the future. I credit him and the coaches for maintaining an atmosphere that was productive, even during some of the leaner years there and kind of building a winning culture slowly. Tough, tough. Uh... At the same time, grateful, you know, because uh, we have the opportunity to play every day, uh, be able to make a mistake, to learn the game. Thinking back, it was kind of on, you know, the downhill side. And even though the team was still struggling, I felt like we were making improvements here and there in small areas. There is history. Cedric Mullins stands alone. The first Oriole ever with a 30-30 season. I think that, you know, one thing I am proud of during those few really tough years was that you couldn't tell this was a 100 loss win team. So I feel good about that. I feel like the culture was in place until we got a little bit more talented, which we did last year. Batting for your Baltimore Orioles, making his major league debut, number 35, Adley Rutschman. Baltimore fans looking forward to seeing first pick overall in the 2019 draft. Leading into 2022, we had, you know, young guys that were right on the cusp of making their debuts, Adley being the biggest one. Rutschman into right field. A fair ball. Adley will turn first. He's going to turn second, go for third. Rutschman into third base standing. An extra base hit. His first hit in the major leagues. Welcome to the show, kid. He really kind of settled in quick, felt comfortable with everyone around him. Uh, like I said, the clubhouse culture, and he was able to thrive through that. And a drive here to right field. That ball is gone. And Adley Rutschman has left Camden Yards for the first of what we hope will be many more times. That's the beautiful thing about baseball is that it's a team game and no one ever talks about the individual accomplishments. You know, looking back on my college career, we always talk about the, you know, winning the College World Series and um, I think that's what I love most about it. So any accomplishments we have, it's because of the team and we celebrate that together. So uh, those are the things I look forward to most and the opportunity to do that. 
With the 42nd selection of the 2019 MLB Draft, the Baltimore Orioles select Gunnar Henderson. There is Baseball America's number one prospect, Gunnar Henderson. On a 2-2, Henderson drills one, right center field and deep, and gone! Oh my goodness! His first Major League hit is his first Major League home run! Gunnar Henderson looks like he's going to be the rookie of the year. And this guy was not the 1-1 overall pick. He was a second round pick. So this probably helped speed up our rebuild to hit on a second round pick that strongly. To me, he's a flagship representation of what we're trying to do here from a scouting and player development standpoint. And it's looking like a franchise changing draft pick at this time. The 2023 Orioles uh, is a very resilient group. Um, and it's a very tight knit group. One thing that's been so, so fun about this group is obviously a talent, you can look at it on paper, but just the quality of human beings and the fact that guys truly love each other, uh, it makes it a ton of fun to show up to the ballpark each and every day. Santander to right, Santander to right, and this baby's gone! Some magic on a Friday night in downtown Baltimore. I see the talent, I see the players, I knew what we can do, I say, Okay, here we go. Uh, we might have a chance to stay on the top. To have these guys that went through those 19, 20, 21 years, for those guys to experience September games that mattered and to play in playoff type atmospheres. Aaron Hayes, spectacular play in left field. And see them perform and see them do well. For me, that was the most gratifying, just knowing what they had witnessed in their first few years of the big leagues to now, you know, this is real big league baseball when you play like that. Just what it sounded like from from Hyder and and Mike, you know, just the direction they were going. It was, you know, it was the team that I wanted to be on. All these guys have played together for so long already, and then now I think that helps them get a little bit even more comfortable here, a little quicker. And then you can just see their, you know, personal makeup. It was it was a no-brainer. This was going to be a team that was going to reach their ceiling, I think, a little bit faster. Rollins into center field. This should do it. Adley Rutschman will score. And the Orioles seal their with a walk-off win. A clincher, a walk-off. Control of the American League East. Now that's not bad for a Sunday. I think our first step was making playoffs and then uh, from there it's winning the last game at the end of the year. Everyone has that goal and everyone's excited for the next step. My goal, of course, is to win the World Series. We have a great opportunity to do that. Uh, it's not going to be easy. No one said it's going to be easy. But to be able to pull that off, that would make it a spectacular season.